So, off to Histon, and with the weather we've had this weekend, I suspect it's going to be maybe not the best playing conditions. Just to remind you, this is what their pitch was like last year. And here, of course, is the state of their car park. See, I've got to admit, I'm always a bit conflicted when I come to Histon. Um, a lot of people get snooty about them and say they don't play proper football, and I, I, I'm not in that camp, really. You know, I, I think if you win the rules of the game, you win the rules of the game. And I wouldn't pay to watch the way Histon play, but they've got every right to play that way. And as they're a, a small team, despite the attractive facade here, um, in a small village, I, I think they get the most out of the resources, and, and fair enough. But it always feels a bit weird when you see this, um, you know, the Cambridgeshire FA headquarters are here. You know, are they, are they endorsing this, uh, the John Beck style of footy? I suppose Cambridge United were uh, his most famous experiments, his most famous projects, and maybe so. I always like this sign next to it, though. The new five-a-side league is starting soon. I, I tell you what, the Histon teams are, are going to have a bit of a problem with the old head height rule, aren't they? Oh... In the present day now, time for me to eat humble pie. I remember standing here last season right on this part of the pitch and looking at the quagmire going down that line because the pitch was deliberately watered to make it hard to play football on. And I, OK, trying to make out it's going to be terrible this time around. And look at it. The pitch is tremendous. It's a great show, Nick, considering the rain that's fallen this week. So, OK. Sorry, Histon. That was bad of me. They, um... The team have just arrived and having a good look around at it. I wonder if Saunders will pick his horses for courses team. Both times against Histon last time around, he picked four centre backs across the back and went big, <laughs> if you like. And we were very creative as a result. We scored nothing in either game. I can't help wondering, would he do that again? I'm not sure if I would myself. Not least because we are lacking creativity at the moment. And our midfield, if it's Smith and Fleming in the middle, and Obeng and Taylor outside them, is essentially two defensive midfielders and then two fullbacks. And if we do that, again, creativity is going to be an issue, isn't it? I don't know. I can't help thinking, you know, Histon tried to turn your defence, they tried to knock it in behind your fullbacks all the time. And I understand the logic, therefore, in playing two big centre backs at fullback. Westwood did well, actually, to be fair to him, playing right back last season. But. Could you maybe also argue that another way to deal with that is to stick Obeng and Taylor as a full-backs because they're quick and when it's knocked in behind the back four they can get around the back quicker to get rid and not just knock it out for a throw which then allows his team to launch something in there. It's my theory, but then what do I know? The other thing I'm wondering is Oye Banjo, their right-back, who's very highly rated, is back from playing from the Irish in the 21s and will be back in their team, apparently, at right-back. Last season... He was always, you know, say, the non-league paper and everyone else say he's wonderful and Satanta were bragging him up when they were on the telly. But last season, he was absolutely roasted by Sam Easton. Let's just think about that sentence again for a second. Roasted by Sam Easton. Now, I can't help thinking that maybe you can get, if you can get at him, you might get some return, which is why I'm wondering, especially seeing the pitches bearing up better than I expected, if there's a case for picking McCluskey on the wing. This doesn't feel like a McCluskey sort of game, a little little jinky winger. But, you know, maybe take the game to them. I always think, against long ball teams, play your own game. Play it your way. Impose your style on them. And looking at the pitch makes me feel more like that. Having said that, my problem with this is, what is our style exactly? I'm not totally sure I know what Wrexham's style is at the moment, so maybe that'll be a bit of a problem. I don't know. One thing disappoints me, the quirkiness isn't here this season. I remember last season, down in that corner there, was an ice cream van. I've never seen an ice cream van that you can actually look at the picture from before. And over on that side is the club shop. And the club shop last season was decorated with Histon underpants. And the windows display this time, sadly, is lacking undergarments. So, slightly disappointed, slightly less quirky. Never mind. Oh, there's another thing worrying me as well. I, in the leader yesterday, I was critical of Dean Saunders. Oh, always a dangerous game, especially having heard his interview in midweek with the BBC Wales. I've just arrived to pick up my press pass and found that I'm, there's too many people in the press box, so I'm on the overspill, which is in the away director's seats. So I'll be sitting next to Mr Saunders' employers and <laughs> wonder what reception I'll get. Uh, I don't know. Hope nobody read it. <laughs> Well, nil-nil was the score in the end, and 
there's been a lot of debate in Red Passion about whether that was a good score or not. Fevered debate. I felt quite pleased with it. I think after the mess of the Hayes game, I think keeping a clean sheet and looking organised against a side that really asks specific awkward questions like Histon does, I thought that was a bit of a step in the right direction. So I was, I was pleased about that, but I do understand people's dissatisfaction, you know, nil-nil at Histon and we're celebrating it, we should be concerned about that. I think that uh, really addresses a broader question, doesn't it, of what's happened to us and where we actually are now. Uh, I can't deny I feel a bit bothered, or very bothered, when I see what happens week in, week out. It just illustrates what we are. And I, I don't want to be naive in saying this, but the fact is that I often hark back to the sort of Brian Flynn teams and, and think, well, if they play these sort of opposition, they'd wipe the floor of them. I know that's a given. You know, we were playing in a higher division then, but it does show how we've fallen and the, the calibre of players that we can attract is, is massively affected because of that. Um, look at the sort of loan players we'll get. If we get a loan player from a, a football league team, it's going to be somebody who's not really wanted by them or, or a kid who has, is nowhere near breaking through. Once you're in, in where we were, League 1, League 2, you're getting players who are getting matches, who are of a decent calibre. Um, it's just inevitable. And to be fair, maybe we shouldn't blame Saunders for that too much. Although perhaps you should look more at non-league players who are seasoned and experienced. But I don't know, I, I felt satisfied in the context, not the big picture, the smaller picture. We were dreadful, really unacceptable at Hayes, against Hayes. We were much, much better against Histon. I'll tell you one thing I did, please, was Mike Williams, who had a bad game against Hayes, obviously he's taken off at half-time, and he's a genuine, sincere bloke, and committed to the team, and fair play. I'm sure he, only, he kept at his place because we were playing Histon, didn't he? We needed the, the big blokes at the back, otherwise, I dare say, Neil Taylor would have been in there, or Williamson. But Williams does play, a bit of luck perhaps in keeping his place, and he was terrific. He did really well, and all credit to him to bounce back from the Saturday before and perform like that it was really impressive. And uh, just note, <laughs> nice to see that he's been recognised in an on league paper. There he is, in the team of the week. Fair play to him. Admittedly, the team of the week is at best a, a slapdash affair sometimes. I've seen non goalkeepers in goal in it, for example, but still, well done to him. He, he deserves the accolade.